Welcome back to the Oxford Save, where today we will be experiencing life in the Championship for the first time. We've got Cardiff City away from home for our first game of the season. And the second match, which we'll probably also play on camera today, is against Preston and North End. We actually might have a cup match before then. We do against MK Don, so they will be the two matches of the episode. We've got a lot of transfers to talk through. Obviously, you guys saw we didn't have the biggest budget in the world, and we've used all of that up. A transfer budget of just £4,000 remaining. And about 20k spare on the wages, so we do have a bit more over there if we're looking to make some final improvements. Gonna talk through the transfers which we've got ongoing currently that we don't have sort of. I'm firstly gonna go through some signings that we. I'm firstly gonna go through some transfers that we're still currently in the process of negotiating. First up, we have Alessandro Riccio from Juventus. He is a centre back and right back. A potential cover sort of option he's got really good potential for the future he's only 21 years old and the reason why i've gone after him is because he sort of has a very similar profile to darnell johnson who's been a very solid option for us at right back you can see he's actually a bit stronger defensively and technically but overall his profile is very similar to darnell who was fantastic for us in league one he's actually got better uh, technical attributes compared to johnson as well just sort of lacking in the physical area but hopefully that will improve with age Diego Ross is a player that I've tried to get in a couple of times throughout the window. I don't even need to scout him. He's incredible. Um, four and a half star here. And I haven't bothered scouting him, to be honest, even to do with that. I should probably just, you know, stick in a scout report, see what happens. They want no contribution, but last time he didn't accept me. I've sort of increased it to star player to see if he'll accept it now. And the final player is Bruno Biden from Brazil. It's not really the name that you'd expect a Brazilian to have, is it? He's just someone for the future, you know, five star potential. Over here, only two star currently, so he wouldn't really play for us in the first season. Anyway, it's time to look at the signings that we have wrapped up. The first one here is Cameron Archer from Aston Villa. He's an advanced forward, three and a half star player, and at this point in time, we didn't have any strikers at the club, so he was the first one that we brought in to play at that position. Five foot seven, player traits of knocks ball past opponent, opponent, which is pretty good. He's more of a poacher, sort of like. He's more of a poacher striker, as you can see. Three and a half star ability, and he'll be a really good option for us. We've got him on 8k a week on loan from Aston Villa. I've made sure to use up all of the potential loans that we could, because obviously you can have five loans in the matchday squad at championship level, and we don't have money. The second signing that we made was Ellery Balcom, who's going to be our first choice goalkeeper for the season. Brought him in from the free agents, I believe. Let's have a look. No, we brought him from Crawley. No. In Brentford for £42,000, which is pretty decent for a 23 year old goalkeeper. If we compare him to our previous goalkeeper, Ed McGinty, you can see that he is better overall. Um, there's not much that McGinty does do better. And when you look at the profile, they do look pretty similar here, but you know, this guy's got areas where I want to be a little bit better. The only one that I would have liked him to be equal with McGinty was shot stopping, but overall, he looks better. Out. If you look at his attributes, he is slightly better overall and a bit of an upgrade, and he does have a lot more potential than Ed McGinty had. So I'm looking forward to see if he can progress for us and sort of be a really good option in this in the championship for us. So that was our only deals that we made in the previous season, but we have made a few more since then. The first was bringing back Lewis Bay on loan. This guy was fantastic for us last season. Played 42 times and averaged almost a seven match rate in he's just so well rounded and we had to bring him back with how consistent he was for us we then brought in a new player and he can play all the way down this left hand side which i loved he's actually a left back um which is where i sort of signed him to play but you know i did like the option of playing him at left wing if needs be he was on loan at charlton last season played pretty well dylan williams is the guy's name by the way i forgot to mention that he's got really good determination and hopefully he'll be a very good player for us Next up, we have Rokas Puskas, who we've signed from Hadjik Split. He's a two and a half star player currently with quite a lot of potential. He'll be sort of a backup player in that midfield role, uh, backup to Lewis Bate. It looks like really good natural fitness, and I'm hoping this guy can improve. Let's compare him to Lewis Bate. And you can see he's not quite as good as him, but he's a very similar shape again. Next up, we have Jao Adriano, who is another player who is really cheap for us to pick up, and another player with really good potential. You can see sort of what I was going for here to try and get a few starters in on loan and then sort of pick up players that would improve throughout the next couple of seasons because I don't think we'll be promoted from the championship this season. That's not my target. My target is consolidation this season, sort of a mid-table mid table finish I'd be very happy with. 
Um, obviously, if I just avoid relegation, that's all the board are concerned about. But yeah, this guy will hopefully sort of work his way into the first team in the coming seasons. Next up, we have the free transfer of Ryan Ledson. We brought him in from Preston and after they released him and he's back at Oxford, a club where he's actually on the favoured personnel list, which is pretty crazy. Is he actually on icons this year? He is down here, um, the bottom of the icons list. But yeah, looks really good, well-rounded player. So going to be a backup to Lewis Bate, maybe some um, sort of rotation option because we will need to be able to rotate Brannigan and Lewis Bate as well. And the final player we brought in was Anthony here. This guy is going to be our starting left winger um, ahead of Josh Murphy because you guys know that his output wasn't what I wanted last season. So he's going to be the one that we're going to go with. He's got really good potential, so he might not be as good as Josh Murphy right now. I haven't actually compared them, I don't think. He is actually slightly better overall, which is really good to see. And obviously with the added bonus of the incredible potential. So those are all our signings. We, made, we spent 900k in total, sold a few players, nothing really um, important there to see in the sales, I don't think. Just sort of some two players who we sold for free to who we sold for a little bit of money and then Gatlin O'Donker who's actually starting for Oxford I think in real life he's gone out on loan to a lower league club. All things considered that does put us 15th predicted in the Skybet Championship just ahead of Ipswich who were also promoted and then Plymouth were the final team promoted they haven't really improved so they've sort of stayed where they were and um, there's some crazy players in this division let me actually go back here and let me kick off and you can see Mikkel Damsgaard is the best player um, has Embuemo been sold? He was actually on this list as the top player beforehand, but yeah, there's some crazy players. It looks like Zaha might have been sold as well. Let's see if Zaha was sold, because he was on the list, this list. Wow, he's gone to Tottenham. Um, I think Ivan Tony's still in here. Yeah, he is, and Embuemo, is he still there? He's gone to Leipzig. Okay then, time for the game. I've already set up the team for what I want. We've got Balcom in goal, the new sign, and we've got Johnson, Moore, Finley, and Williams as our back four. We've got McGuane, Brannigan and Bate and the oh so familiar midfield and then Kyan Edwards I forgot to mention has come back in um, really recently. I'm not sure why he didn't show up on the transfers. Did he show up? Did I just miss him? No he doesn't show up. That's very weird. Okay well yeah he's recently come back in. It was for so long I couldn't get him back in because he didn't want to speak to me but we have eventually brought him back in and he's starting even though apparently um, Cameron Archer is a better player. He's going to obviously keep that position because he was so good for us last season. And yeah, let's get into the match. The first highlight of the season is a Cardiff highlight. Mark McGuinness there in the Cardiff defence is actually a player that I looked at signing. Quite a few players that you'll see throughout the season that I actually had a go at signing, but obviously not a lot of them wanted to speak to us because we don't have the budget of most of these other championship teams. Callum Robertson here behind, just over the bar from the Irish striker. Yet another highlight here is Allsop, the Cardiff City goalkeeper as we hear at the Millennium Stadium. Look at the stadium, it's absolutely massive compared to what we're experiencing last season. Kyan Edwards gets dispossessed by Mark McGuinness. Those two might have actually been teammates in the past there. Mark McGuinness, I believe, used to play for Arsenal as well, coming up in the Youth Academy and didn't even didn't quite make it, sorry, uh, unfortunately. Callum Robertson, I believe, is offside there and he's actually scored. Is it going to be called off? No, it's not. 1-0 down, Shea Yojo with the assist, and Callum Robertson has sort of fired it straight out of Volcom, and somehow it's gone in, which is not very promising from our new signing. Here we go, nice ball over the top, and he is easy on the side, actually. Callum Robertson just completely outpacing Finley, and that's dreadful keeping. Yeah, it's another highlight, and it looks like it's all Cardiff today. We haven't even managed a shot on target yet. We have had more shots in total though, I guess, but let's see what we can do. Maybe we can get a cheeky dispossession here with Kyan Edwards with a slide tackle from behind. A great actual challenge there. And he's in behind now. Can he finish? Yes, he can. Kyan Edwards continues with the form he showed last season. Repays the faith in me starting him over the arguably better Cal uh, Cameron Archer. But, you know, I've got faith in big Kyan. He's been fantastic for us last season, and I hope he can keep scoring chances like this. Oh, it's an eventful game today, isn't it? 22 minutes in and we've already had about five highlights. Cardiff now trying to build up possession from the kickoff. Perry NG, what a baller, plays the ball through to Car Callum Robinson, I believe. Finley blocks the shot. Oh, we've got a free kick. Is this Lewis Bay? It is. Steps back. Goes for it, just wide of the post, it seems. Plymouth are actually tuning it up against Ipswich in the battle between the two promoted sides. Yes, they are. Ryan Hardy with two goals very early on. Um, we'll ignore that, to be honest. 
oh, highlight straight away just as I was doing that. Ronan to Perry NG finds Lee Wai Ko or just wide of the bar, uh, wide of the, just hits the post even. More with the ball here. What can he do? Finds Williams out wide. Let's drive Williams. Let's see if we can do something. Anthony, the new signing on his debut, plays it back with a 1 2, and the ball to Kyan Edwards is intercepted. Still got it though. Finley, what can you do? Anthony was making a pretty good run there, but he didn't carry on with it, unfortunately. We've got a lot of space over here on the right hand side as well. Marcus Brown in some real good space. McGuane now into bait. Over the top for Kayan Edwards. Great save from Allsop there. We've really sort of started the second half a bit better than we did in the first half. I felt like we were sort of waiting to concede in that first half. Even though we did bring it back to 1-1, one -one, we just felt like we were always the worst team there. Anthony losing the ball, unfortunately. One last highlight, it seems like, in the 92nd minute. Brown on the ball, hoofs it up and actually just gives it straight away to the opposition. We're going to be right on the back foot now, right in deep in stoppage time, actually. Evans into Bacon. We managed to cut it out, fortunately, and Brown clears it yet again. This time, Cameron Archer is able to receive it. Can he find someone? They've got six men back here. Ledson brought him on for Brown again. He wasn't really having a good performance. And Marcus McGuane goes for the long shot. Miles wide of the post. So the full-time whistle blows in South Wales, and you can see we, we, we actually sort of came back into that. We both had 16 shots. I know we didn't have the same XG as Cardiff, but I'm not too displeased at that, you know. A draw in our first performance in the championship, a new division away from home at a big stadium, and we played solid. We've got a slightly different team, giving debuts to our two other new signings, the two youngsters with good potential in the Carabao Cup. Cameron Archer came off the bench in the last match and didn't really do too much, but we're giving him a start this time. Uh, numbers, I'm going to give these guys higher numbers just so I can recognize them differently. There we go. First highlight of the game, and it's a really nice ball through from Brown. Cameron Archer with a dreadful finish. I've just realized I put Marcus Brown on that center mid. I actually meant to put Ledson on. <laughs> Hunt now, running down the right hand side, well, our left hand side, I guess. Oh, horror. He's a really good player as well. I looked at him as another signing, but MK Dons wanted a lot of money. Burns in behind Edmund Ginty manages to make the save there. Marcus Brown plays it all the way back to Moore. Other Brown now, Kieran Brown, who I'm actually playing at centre back. Archer with a good run, but yet again he's unable to finish. I think I'm going to have to make some changes now, to be honest. 70 minutes in and we haven't looked dangerous at all. There's been two highlights all game. Going to bring off Jai Adriano for Jody Jones, give him some playtime. Um, who else needs some playtime? Ryan Ledson could come off for of Marcus Brown soon, as that's what I actually meant to do in the first place. And do I no, I'm gonna give Cameron Archer more time. He hasn't looked very good so far, but hopefully he'll be able to pick it up. Um well, that's it, we'll just make the two changes for now and see what happens. Straight away it looks like it could have made a difference here, but Ryan Ledson puts it wide. Both of the new substitutes were involved in that play there. Dreadful finish from Ledson there. Murphy here on the right hand side finds Ryan Ledson who goes to the long board to Jody Jones who really picked up his form late on in the season last time out. Really dreadful finish from Cameron Archer there and that might be enough you know. I might take him off if he doesn't score from this highlight because he's been really frustrating so far today. Moore wins the ball but we give it straight back away. Long ball now. Long intercepts. Plus gas, what can he do? Tries to find Ryan Ledson, but he's dispossessed. And now MK Dons are back on the attack. They haven't really had anything all game to show for themselves. You can see they actually is massively in our favour, but it looks like it might be them who gets the next opportunity. But no, Puskas wins the ball. Murphy now out wide. Archer, what are you doing, mate? What? what? He's coming off. He's got to go. He's like Nunes. He doesn't know the offside rule. Kyan Edwards, get on the pitch, please. Well, then, we've got a penalty shoot at now. <laughs> That's not ideal. Um, yeah, I guess that's the right order that will do. Um, I always go for relax, pick your spot, and don't change your mind. Joe Adriano is anxious. That's fine. He's not taking a penalty. He's not even on the pitch. We subbed him off. Let's see what happens then. This looks like a little new graphic here. Let's go behind the goal for the penalty shootout as we actually score the first one, which is great to see. Eyes are stepping up now for MK Duns. Ed McGinty makes a save with his foot. Okay, that was interesting. Interesting animation there. Brannigan up next. Might be worthwhile speeding up this just a little bit. Let's do it just a tiny bit here. Um, 
up one tick. Burns now. Left footer on the penalty. Sticks it comfortably past Ed, Ed McGinty there. Kyan Edwards now. Of course he puts it away. Never in doubt there. Bet Archer would have missed that. Long sticks his penalty in the corner comfortably. And it's Elliot Moore now, the centre-back. Good finish there into the bottom corner. I believe if MK Dons miss this, then we win the penalty shootout. Frankie, what, what are you going to do, mate? Steps up and puts it miles wide. And there we go. We have won on penalties in the first round of the Carabao Cup. We didn't play great, but we've got the job done. That's all that matters, isn't it? And that is where we're going to leave things off for this episode. You can see we are undefeated so far this season. A really, really good preseason for us as well. In terms of the next game, we are Oxford. So who would we like to play? We should probably play someone new, someone that we haven't played before. It might be nice to play Birmingham Coventry, maybe Reading, actually. I think Reading might be a little bit of a derby for Oxford. Let's see if we can see. Uh, club info. In terms of derbies, we've got Swindon, Reading, and Northampton. So yeah, Reading would be a good one to have. So I think Reading and Birmingham is what we'll do. I think that is very good. Um, Birmingham is a team that I tend to do my saves with. I've actually done my save last year was with Birmingham. And my first ever football manager save was with Birmingham as well. So that would be nice to play against them. And then Reading. Um, before that, sounds good.